Nikola Tesla is one of the greatest physicists in history and an ingenious inventor. Low-budget electricity production is Tesla's merit. Powerful light bulbs capable of illuminating huge rooms are the fruit of Tesla's imagination, as well as wireless energy transfer and electric motors. It would seem that such an accomplished inventor must be wealthy and have monuments erected in his honor during his lifetime. But quite on the contrary, he was often called a madman, charlatan and deceiver, and millions of dollars and Nobel Prizes for his inventions most often went to someone else. In this episode of How It Was, we will tell you about the scientist who, years after his death, was rightfully called Leonardo da Vinci of the 20th century. You will learn how Tesla's passion for physics began and what it has to do with cats. We will also recall how the War of the Currents unfolded, what Tesla has to do with discovering the radio and X-rays, and why these and many other inventions were attributed to other people. On July the 10th, 1856, thunderstorms of unprecedented force hit the whole Balkan Peninsula and the village of Smiljan on the Austrian Empire, modern-day Croatia. The sky was filled with lightning strikes and black clouds. To the accompaniment of thunder, a newborn's cry was heard in the house of a Serbian priest. The fourth child in the family was born. According to family legend, the midwife declared the lightning a bad omen. This child will be a child of darkness, she said, to which the mother swiftly replied, no, he will be a child of light. Nicola turned out to be an intelligent and inquisitive child beyond his age. Being a polyglot from an early age, he preferred the company of books or animals to peers. One winter evening, Nicola stroked his black cat, and his hand produced a shower of sparks. This piqued his interest. Nicola's father was an educated person and explained to him that this was electricity. The episode with the cat made such a strong impression on Tesla that even 80 years later, he recalled that evening. However, our world could well have lost the greatest physicist in history. The cholera pandemic that swept across Europe in the second half of the 19th century took the lives of about 600,000 people. Nikola Tesla could have been among them. He was bedridden for nine months, near death multiple times. Tesla himself later jokingly recalled that it was not God in whom his father believed so much, but science that helped him survive. His father promised Tesla that if he were to survive cholera, he would be allowed to attend the Austrian Polytechnic School at Graz to study engineering. Tesla's father kept his word and helped Nikola enter the best technical educational institution of those times. There, he soon became known as a nerd and eccentric personality. He was bullied by fellow students. To demonstrate in every possible way that he was the same as everyone else, Nikola began gambling and drinking. At the end of the second year, Nikola Tesla's scholarship was withdrawn. He was kicked out of the university and returned home. His father's imminent death made him forget for a while about dreams of curbing the laws of physics. The family needed money, and Nikola got a job as a teacher in a local gymnasium and then as a draftsman in the Budapest Central Telegraph office. After moving to Paris in 1882, he started working as an electrical engineer in the Continental Edison Company. His career went uphill. Soon he was already repairing the company's installations throughout Europe. During the day, Tesla worked for customers, and at night, for the future of science. Already back then, he realized the basic operating principle of a rotating magnetic field and invented an asynchronous induction generator. However, he kept most of his ideas to himself. A culmination of his European career was launching the new lighting system at the railroad station in Strasbourg. A lighting system was damaged on a trial run. The opening ceremony ended with an epic flash causing an explosion. Strasbourg was then part of the German Empire, so the talented German-speaking Tesla was sent to solve the problem. His company promised to pay $25,000 for the job, more than $650,000 in modern money. This amount would be quite enough to start a business and implement all the ideas that Tesla was hatching. Therefore, Nikola dropped everything and came to Strasbourg. He fixed and restarted the lighting system within a year. The government approved the job after the repairs, but Tesla never received the compensation promised for the work. The offended engineer quit his career at the Continental Edison Company. Fortunately, Tesla was soon offered a much more exciting job in New York with Thomas Edison himself. Nikola agreed. The year was 1884.
at Edison Machine Works, Nikola took up the position of repair engineer for direct current DC motors and generators. For a man of Tesla's mind, this was a somewhat primitive work. Even then, the young physicist believed that the DC electric power transmission system, on which Edison had made his fortune, was morally obsolete. In his mind, the future belonged to the alternating current, AC. The AC voltage level can easily be changed using transformers to step up or step down the voltage. And when using a three-phase AC system, later patented by Tesla, the power supply's efficiency increases significantly. In addition, Tesla's AC motor was much simpler and cost much less than a DC motor. Edison was pleased with his new European employee. Tesla was a devil for work. Edison promised Tesla a $50,000, that's about $1.3 million today, bonus to design a solution to improve the direct current electrical equipment. Tesla presented 24 different types of standard machines. When Tesla demanded his compensation, Edison claimed the offer was a joke. As a result, after working for Edison for six months, Tesla left and later became an active participant in the AC-DC War of the Currents. Tesla created his own company and was actively developing new devices for several years, patenting his inventions. A few years later, he met another fan of alternating current, the industrialist George Westinghouse, who was Edison's rival. The latter bought the patent Tesla had obtained for his AC motor and then hired him to work at his Pennsylvania manufacturing plant. The alternating current generators created with Tesla's help were used by Westinghouse to construct the largest hydroelectric power station of that time, in Niagara Falls. Edison, being a passionate supporter of DC, launched a campaign to discredit AC and convince the public it was dangerous. Westinghouse's business was hounded in the press. Tesla was called a charlatan. His invention was described as only being capable of murder. Edison's company cited as an example a new, humane device for executions, the electric chair. It is possible, by the way, that Edison himself invented it. That's a strong argument, thought Tesla, and in response began giving presentations of alternators of his invention. At one point, he demonstrated the safety of his alternating current by running thousands of volts of electricity through his body. However, the audience perceived it simply as a trick. People did not understand the complexity of transformer systems, and they did not particularly want to understand. Edison's generators worked fine. In 1895, a fire broke out in Tesla's New York laboratory, and all of his developments burned to the ground. By this time, the intensity of the war of the currents had already somewhat diminished, but rumors of possible arson still swirled. However, investigations indicated that the reason was not the intrigues of competitors, but a short circuit. The inventor opened a new laboratory nearby, also in Manhattan. After the fire, the active phase of the War of the Currents gradually faded away. Competitive companies began to merge. Thomas Edison and his direct current method was squeezed out of the electrical business. The AC began to dominate the market and Tesla switched to other research and discoveries. Fame and even patents were of little interest to him. All he wanted to do was science. The history of the invention of the radio is a prime example of this preference. In 1893, Nikola Tesla first publicly demonstrated the transmission of electromagnetic energy without wires, and in 1897, he applied for the first patent for wireless data transmission. In 1900, the Italian Guglielmo Marconi filed a US patent for radio technology and was turned down because it too closely resembled Tesla's work. Tesla himself did not mind Marconi using his developments, making a name and money on them. When Marconi for the first time transmitted signals across the Atlantic in 1901, Tesla commented, Marconi is a good fellow, let him continue. He is using 17 of my patents. But it soon turned out that Marconi was not such a good fellow. He had powerful connections in England and equally powerful financial backers in America. The patent for the invention of radio was suddenly reconsidered and credited to Marconi in 1904. As a result, the Italian gained fame, a Nobel Prize in physics, and millions of dollars, while Tesla got nothing for his invention. 
Only in 1943 did the US Supreme Court rule that Tesla's radio patents had preceded all others, including Marconi's. It is a pity that Tesla himself did not find out about this. He died a few months earlier. The fame for discovering X-ray radiation of elements also did not go to Tesla, although he first began to investigate them back in 1887, eight years before Wilhelm Conrad Röntgen made the first public statement about X-rays. Carried away by other projects, Tesla simply did not bother to obtain a patent. It happened with many of Tesla's inventions, not to mention the research and many hours of work that burned down in 1895 along with his laboratory. The older Tesla got, the more he closed himself off from society, creating an aura of mystery around him. As a result, his personality was overgrown with legends. One theory is that Tesla's experiments with wireless transmission may have inadvertently caused the Tunguska meteorite explosion. Another, according to legend, Tesla worked for the American military, a US ship mysteriously to disappear in Virginia and reappear suddenly in Philadelphia. Some say that Tesla was crazy in his old age because he offered many countries of the world to buy a project of a device that would send a death beam of concentrated particles, a super weapon that would put an end to all war. Despite the massive number of patented technologies and the development of hundreds of inventions, Nikola Tesla died broke and all alone. The physicist had no family, friends or money apart from the small pension paid by the Westinghouse company. He lived most of his time in hotels, he would spend much of his time feeding and, he claimed, mystically communicating with New York City's pigeons in later life. Whenever he ate, he had to have 18 napkins at the table. He demanded to deliver 18 fresh towels to his room every morning. Tesla left this world at the age of 86 in a New York hotel room, convinced that humanity is simply not ready to appreciate his inventions. Do you like the video? Please click the bell so you don't miss new episodes of How It Was.